What is up everybody? This rider is gonna go a little bit too wide in this turn. That's what's gonna cause this crash. But how did it happen? You know, why did it happen? So we're gonna go over that. And some of the tips that I'm gonna give you is gonna hopefully help you out to where you're not gonna have something like this when you're out riding this weekend. If you would like to know what to do after a motorcycle crash and possibly save somebody's life, make sure you go to accidentscene.org and sign up for their online class. This is a great opportunity and a great way for you to learn what to do, how to do it, and then possibly save somebody's life. So right away, let's go ahead and look at where we're at just from this image. Let's do a scene survey here. So what we see here is we have a nice open road, no real obstructions. We have oncoming traffic coming this way and we have one single lane. We don't have a massive escape route to the right or the left and we have good visibility right now. But let's go ahead and move forward a little bit. Now that hazard of the car, the oncoming traffic is gone, still don't have an escape route to the right, kind of have one to the left, but it's very hazardous because of oncoming traffic. So let's move forward a little bit more. Now we see that there is a bush. It's kind of hard for you guys to see on your side, but on my side, I see this big bush. It's kind of blocking the rest of the road. You see how the road is curving to the left? That's great, we can see that. So we have really good vision. So our speed really isn't gonna play a factor right now because we see everything wide open road, everything's beautiful. Now let's go ahead and move forward a little bit. Now we're gonna to get to the point where the road seems to like almost disappear. So there's that bush that I was talking about. Now the road disappeared. So what happened? Well, what's happening here is that it's called a crest. So it's gonna be a vertical turn, if you will, but it's gonna be like a blind vertical turn. So you have a turn to the left, turn to the right, it could be blind, cannot be. You know, but this is what's happening here. We have a blind hill to go over. With that, we have no idea if it's gonna bank more to the left, it's gonna bank more to the right, it's gonna continue on its path straight, is it gonna go down into a ditch? We have no idea what's happening here. So when that happens, that's your indication of, ooh, something is not right. So let's go ahead and back it off a little bit. When I say back it off, let's go ahead and roll off the throttle a little bit. Let's get extra aware, get more vigilant to what's happening right now. And the best thing, like I said, is to do is to roll off the throttle. Why? Because when you increase the space and you slow down, you buy yourself more time and you buy yourself more options just in case you have to apply the brakes, straighten up, turn harder, whatever it is. We don't know until we get close enough to where we can see. This is where vision and visibility is very important. So if you have terrible vision, let's go ahead and check and go to the doctor, possibly wear your glasses with your bike if you have glasses or get contacts. So we're gonna get into this position right here. And just like I said, you can't really tell what's happening. You don't know where the road is going. So if you can't see that far, let's slow down so we can use the space we have available. So the whole line positioning, the slow look, press and roll really do play a role in here. And if we wanna go a little bit wider so we can see better, especially on a left-handed turn, but on this vertical turn, it's kind of hard to, to really tell. So be in about lane position two in this situation because you don't know if there's gonna be a massive turn to the left or turn to the right. So lane position two will give you the best space cushion. So with slow look, press and roll, what you're doing is you're already slowing down, like I said, because the hazard, you can't really tell what's around the corner. You can't really tell what's around the hill. So we're slowing down. We need to look. So we're still at the look phase all the way until right when he starts to go off the road. So we're still in the look phase and we can't press yet because we don't know if it's turning right or left. So we can't press right or left and then we can't roll in the throttle yet. So we're still in the look. So right here, we still can't tell what's going on. We really can't. The only thing that we have for indicators are these two posts right here. That is letting you know that there is a road here. And in some places that's usually there because it snows, it rains, poor visibility. It's letting you know, hey, the road is right there. So that's really good information to have but this rider didn't have it in the, at this time, and we're gonna go off the road. So he's actually saying that, but you see how the road now opens up? So about two seconds ago, we didn't see where it went. Now we know where it goes. We know it goes a little bit to the left and then it goes to the right. Perfect visibility, perfect everything. But if you get a little bit of a panic when you are going up to something like this and you can't see, slow down a little bit. Just There's nothing wrong with that. It's still gonna be a beautiful ride. It's still gonna be, everything's fine. If you're in a group, everyone's gonna understand why you did it, so don't worry about that. I'd rather you stay on the road, go a little bit slower, and then accelerate after this crest than to go off the road and having to deal with calling somebody to help you out, calling your insurance, calling you know, possibly 911 because you got hurt, all these different things, it's not worth it. Maybe dropping down five to 10 miles per hour is gonna be the best bet here, 
and then you can go over or around these types of turns. So he's gonna go ahead and go off the road a little bit, and let's go ahead and jump into a little bit of the, the medical side of this. So this is gonna be what typically an EMS provider is gonna show up on scene, and we'll see. They're gonna have the rider ambulating, which is just walking around, and then you have a bike on its side. With the direction of travel, you're gonna know that he went off the road, and this is typically when I'd ask the rider, hey, how fast were you going? That's gonna give me a good mechanism of injury. And what that means with that speed is that if he was going at a very high rate of speed, I'm expecting to have some type of trauma, like massive trauma to his body. If he said, oh, I'm going about 15 to 20, I can expect maybe to have some broken bones, especially with the weaker bones, like the collarbone, and then the radius ulna, which is in your arm right here. I can expect some of those things, but if he's gonna be at a high rate of speed, I'm gonna start expecting massive spinal trauma and possible TBIs that are more advanced, not necessarily like the moderate small concussion stuff that you can still get at 10 miles an hour. But then I'm also gonna look into possible, you know, internal bleedings and all these different things based on my rapid trauma assessment and then my full assessment a little bit later. So right here, the fact that he's ambulating, that's a really good sign, so he's not severely injured. And there's gonna be some uh, pictures that he's gonna show of the damage. So when you see the damage of a motorcycle, just translate that to your body. Imagine that force and that kinetic energy transferred into the soft tissue that you have, especially in your abdomen, your lower back, and then your chest, and then uh, your legs and arms. You know, All that stuff can easily be ripped apart and broken and probably gonna get demonetized for saying all those things, but uh, all these different things can be transmitted to you. So if we see a bike that is severely damaged, broken even, just think of what it can do to your body. So this is why you need to wear full gear, all the gear all the time, full PPE, personal protective equipment. That is something that you're gonna wanna have as an insurance to keep your body nice and safe. So he's saying that he, uh, all the damaged parts were removed, but just look at this, look at all these different things. Imagine removing damaged parts from your body. Imagine going to the hospital and them having to do reconstructive surgery just like we're doing to this bike right now. This is why it's very important to have gear on you so you don't have to have that. And if you're riding with a buddy or anything like that, it's always good to have some type of training for a medical side. So accidentscene.org is where you wanna go and take an on Online class. Use code DDFM, you're gonna get $5 off on the class. And it's very good to have this information because when you get into a crash, your buddy wants to take care of you. How is he gonna do it? He doesn't know how until he takes the class. Let's say your buddy crashes. How are you gonna take care of him? You don't know until you take the class. Highly recommend it, everybody. So right here we have this motorcycle rider, a little bit impatient. Uh, the speed limit is 40 miles an hour in this zone. He's going 42, so whatever, that's perfectly fine. Later on, he gets about to 60. That's considered criminal speeding in the state of Arizona. Anything 20 over the speed limit or 85 anywhere in the state of Arizona is considered criminal speeding. You get a lot of